Hi, I'm Frank LaFleur. I'm product manager for High Speed Video at Olympus. We're here at NAB 2012 and we're launching a new camera. Our new camera is the Olympus PL. With all the experience that we've had in the industrial field, we've come to figure that a lot of people were using it in media. So what we've done is we've actually adapted our industrial camera to suit the media need. Our camera here can do 720p up to 2,000 frames per second and can also go 800 by 600 up to 5,000 frames per second. It's, it's got a PL mount, so you can use any PL lenses. It can do, it comes in 8 gigs or 16 gig sizes, so you can get any shot quickly and easily. Our real claim to fame is our CDU, our control display unit. The control display unit makes it exceptionally easy to get, capture your shot, review the shot, crop what you need, save it, and move on to the next. No adjustments are needed in between shots, nothing, nothing is required, and anybody could do it. So within minutes, you can set up a camera, take a shot, and move on to your next one. So what kind of sensor size are we looking at? Is this Super 35? It's a custom-made sen uh, sensor, so it is full size, and our, our, our actual pixels are uh, 21 nanometers, so they're quite large. Our light sensitivity is actually 1600 ASA. So as far as light sensitivity is concerned for a camera, it's exceptional. So obviously sunlight would be great, but under regular circumstances or limited lighting, you can still get an exceptional product. Now, it, it, it maximum is 720p, that's the, the largest raster size the camera will record? That's right. We based it off our industrial camera, so technically speaking, the resolution is 1080 by 1024. So that's where the resolution stands now. So in order to adapt it to media, we just went with 720p. And where is the media located? What do you actually record to? So it's a circular buffer, and that's what the 8 gig and 16 gig is re required. So you just record as long as you want. Once you see what you need, that's when you stop. So it's stored in the buffer, so you can actually review as you work. And once you review and you find what you need, you actually crop it on the fly on the CDU, and then you save it to a CF card. There are multiple different ways of saving. You can either do sequential uncompressed, sequential compressed, raw, or RHSV, compressed or uncompressed. Any of these factors can obviously go into post-editing, but the idea is you only have to save what you really want. So you basically dump it from the RAM buffer to a, an onboard CF card. That's correct. And then you offload your CF card to whatever computer. And what kind of codex in, on the compressed side does it actually record? It's a, it's a fairly, it's an off-the-shelf codex, so it's not anything too complex, you really should have no problem playing it on whether it be a Mac or a PC with no additional software. Now of course you do need, especially if you're doing sequencing, your own post-editing software, but beyond that it's got everything that you need. Now are there any other imaging controls? Can you control like the latitude, is there an S curve, or is there any kind of color imagery controls? There are some, uh, there are some easy to use color, color adjustments and uh, they're all controllable by the CDU, uh, very easily controlled, but nothing overly complex. We wanted to maintain the ability for just about anybody to use the camera right away. Now they do, there are some color adjustments, uh, but for example white balance you can easily select the color, or the, the, the color temperature, but you don't necessarily have to be over, uh, over knowledgeable in the grand scheme of things. And if you hold, you can actually increase the speed. And we go back to the beginning of the, sp the spin, we can set our bookmark to, for the start, go through, find the entire spin, and at the end point, we set our end point. We then have a clip selected. That clip can then be saved to, a, to our compact flash card. You can select through the, control, through the configuration how you want it to save. In this case, we have it set to compress sequence. You set to the one you like the most and the one you use the most, and it saves it and it keeps it. You'll notice there's a lot of settings, information, but the main screen is quite, quite easy in the sense that we've got frame rates, shutter, uh, aspect ratio, our white balance, so in this case we've defaulted to 56K, but we could also go auto. It's very intuitive, and as an added bonus, we've transferred over our eye focus feature. 
So our eye focus feature will actually highlight the sharpest point in the image to make it much easier to focus, which is exceptionally handy when you've got a lot of light, which is often needed for high speed. So as you can see, the blue is out of focus, and as we approach something in focus, it turns red, which is the sharpest point. So we know that that's going to be in focus during the image. Once we want to record something, we simply go in. We can either go see what's in the buffer, or it's asking us, do you want to continue and replace what's in the buffer? We say yes, and we instantly start recording. It's a circular buffer, so it's recording until we see what we want. Once we see what we want, we simply stop, and here we have the video again, and we can do it all over again where we find what we need, set our, set our clip, and save it, all within a few seconds. So the iSpeed PL, the 8 gig, is actually marketed around 43,000, which makes it much more attractive than higher end cameras, which can get quite expensive, even over $100,000. For a lot of applications, this is the way to go if you've got the time, and you can also either rent it directly from Olympus or rental houses that have purchased from us.